Hi children, good morning. How are you? Hope you all are doing well. Okay, today we are going to start the second lesson, Factors Promoting the Growth of Nationalism and the Foundation of the International Congress. Okay, what do you know about nationalism? Nationalism is a feeling of oneness, togetherness, common consciousness based on historical, linguistic, political, social, cultural, and many factors in the state. Okay, this, uh, this, that is what we mean, nationalism. Now, what are the factors that led to the promotion of the growth of nationalism? There are many factors given in the text, like economic exploitations in India, then um, repressive policies of Lord Lytton, then rise of middle class. All these are given in the text. But children, now the syllabus is reduced, so we don't need to learn all that. We need to learn only the socio-religious reform movement, then the social reformers, then about the role of the press, then we need to learn about the Indian Association and East India Association and the immediate objectives of the INC, or we call it as International Congress. These are the things only we need to learn from this lesson. So, what are the factors that led to the rise of nationalism? That is, a, we, need, we learn the socio-religious reform movement. So, when we talk about the socio-religious reform movement, in the 19th century, the educated Indians, they understood that the Indian society has to be reformed. So they started various reform movement. So in the light of the new knowledge, like Western education and the philosophy, they understood that they, sh they need to reform the Hindu religion. So they started the Arya Samaj, the Brahma Samaj, the Ramakrishna Mission, the Pratna Samaj, the Theosophical Society, and similar uh, Reform movement was also done in the Muslim, the Sikh, the Parsis, and all. They have a lot of changes. Now, in the religious sphere, they wanted to attack the superstitions, the blind beliefs, the polygamy, and also they wanted to abolish the hereditary priesthood. When it comes to the social reforms, they wanted to abolish the caste system the untouchability, the female infanticide, and all this to be banned. Then, all because of all this reform movement, the Indian people could reorganize in a democratic lines. That is, they uh, got the ideas of individual equality, social equality, and liberation, and they started reforming the society. So, there was a rapid development in the Minds of the people, that means they got a self-confidence and self-respect. And the spirit of this patriotism started growing in the minds of the Indian people. And also they worked for the emancipation of the women and the women education. So all this social religious moment gave birth to a rise of nationalism. Now, let us learn about who all are the Great social reformers. First, we will learn about Rajara Mohan Roy. Rajara Mohan Roy and uh, Jodhra Fule, we need to learn from this lesson. Uh, Jodhra Fule is also known as uh, Jodhiba. Okay, sometimes the question can come what are the contributions of Jodhiba Fule? That time, don't say that uh, we didn't learn about Jodhiba Fule, we learned only about Jodhra Fule. It's not like that. You have to learn these two great social reformers. They are the Rajara Mohan Roy and Jodhra Phule or Jodhiba Phule. So first we will learn about Rajara Mohan Roy. Now, who was this Rajara Mohan Roy? He was a great social reformer in the 19th century. So in the 19th century, he was a great social reformer. Because of that, he was also known as the father of Indian Renaissance. So, in the religious sphere, what he did is, he translated to purify the Hindus. 
okay the to purify the hindu religion is translated the vedas and upanishads into bengali language and he condemned the caste system he opposed the untouchability and also the rites and rituals and the costly sacrifices he also believed in the supreme god there is only one god and that is what in the religious sphere when it comes to the social sphere he worked for the uh, he abolished the sadi system with the help of lord william bentick in 1829 okay in 1829 he abolished the sadi system with the help of lord william bentick then he he also worked he he had a desire that the women should get or the right to inherit the property so he worked for that and also he worked for the women's education and he also condemned the female infanticide and he favored widows remarriage and he started the brahma samaj in 1828 ad in that his idols was he denounced the idol worship he also wanted to abolish the untouchability and he spread or he want he started many schools to improve the education of the masses that is what his contribution so he was against the rigid caste system he worked for the upliftment of the women at the same time he desired that women should get in harit the hereditary property okay then he worked for their remarriage he favored the remarriage widows remarriage and he was against the female infanticide and the against the sadi system then comes the next personality is the jodhira phule or we we can say that jodhiba phule he was a activist a thinker a great social reformer and worked for the upliftment of the women and the lower caste people so he took a lot of effort to educate the women so he started a, a movement he founded a satya shodhak samaj in 1873 ad and in that he worked for the shudras and adi shudras that means he worked for the lower caste people that they should come in the front that all this caste system the rigid caste system should be abolished so he also worked for the denouncing of the caste system and he also was against the idol worship so that was his contribution upliftment of the women in the society at the same time of uh, giving education for the women and for all the lower caste people so that was his contribution now let us learn about the role of the press what do you know about the role of the press when we talk about the role of the press can you tell which is the first newspaper in india that is which is the first newspaper in india the first newspaper was started in 1780 that was the bengal gazette why this newspapers are for this newspaper is another means of communication that gave much importance to the indian society that says that they uh, this newspaper or the communication brought the people closer that means even the people who are abroad or people who are far from the places or in staying in other countries or the communication brought them closer so another thing this is a platform it's a forum for giving their public opinion so they started many newspapers so the first newspaper was the bengal gazette just started in 1780 ad then comes another two newspapers started by rajara mohan roy that is sambad kaumadi and uh miratul akbar that is in persian language this also started for the betterment of the people 
Then uh, Dada Bhai Naroji, another great uh, social reformer, he's also started Rastaftar. Then Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar started Shyam Prakash. That was also giving all these newspapers are started to criticize the unjust policies of the British and to liberate the Hindu. Indian people and now let us learn about the associations. There are many associations started for the uh, rise of nationalism. Among that we need to learn only two associations that is East India Association and the Indian Association. The East India Association started in 1866 AD by Dadabai Nauroji. You know for what they started? Actually to abolish the textile duty and to withdraw the vernacular press act they started this east india association now indian association why they started the indian association who started the indian association it is started by surendranath banerji in 1876 ad so there is a gap of 10 years 1866 east india association 1876 Indian Association. So East India Association started by Dada by Naroji and Indian Association by Sudendranath Banerjee. So all these associations are started for the benefit of the Indian people. Okay. Now let us learn about the Indian National Conference. When we talk about the Indian National Conference, when was the origin of the Indian National Congress? So the Indian National Conference, Congress was started in 1883, 31st March, by A.O. Hume. He is an ICS officer. So he called out all the graduates of the Calcutta University to join this movement or organization to G for the regeneration of India. So around 50 prominent members. 50 members or 50 graduates joined here. At the same time, some of the prominent members like uh, Surendranath Banerjee, Dada Bhai Nauroji, Badruddin Thiabji, WZ Banerjee, all these prominent members also joined with him. And he started this uh, International Congress with the help of Lord Dufferin, the then Viceroy. Later on, uh, this AU, he called out for a meeting in 1885. That is, that time he called out in Pune, but that time there was a cholera broke out and due to the cholera broke out, they had to shift this meeting. So they shifted this in the same year, 1885, December 28 to 30 in Gogul Das Tejpal Sanskrit College in Mumbai. So there they had the meeting formally and there they selected the first international Congress was formally organized and the first president was W.C. Banerjee. So in this meeting, the first meeting, a lot of eminent or the prominent Britishers also were attended. Many of the British people attended this meeting, the first session, the second session, and all the sessions they attended this meeting. But gradually they understood that the Indian people started to unite. So this was not liked by the Britishers because that gave a dissatisfaction among the British rulers. So in 1887, the British made microscopic obstacles for this uh, International Congress. Now the immediate objectives of the International Congress, W.Z. Banerjee called out to lay down certain immediate objectives. So what are the immediate objectives he laid down there for the Indian people? To enable the national workers from all parts of India to become personally known to each other, to end all racial, religious, and provincial prejudice, and to promote feeling of national unity among all the patriots of the country, to promote friendly relations between the Hindus and the Muslims, to formulate popular opinion on vital Indian problems and to present this before the government, 
to create, train and organize a strong body of public opinion in the country. And also, he wanted to integrate all the people, means the whole people of India into one, or to make all the Indians to participate in the Indian programs or Indian National Congress. So the first, we know that the first Indian National Congress was held in 1885 with W. Z. Banerjee as a president. And the second national conference, international conference was held in Calcutta, Dada by Nauruji as a president. And the third one, 1887, by Badruddin Tabji as a president in Madras. We don't need to learn about the third one. First and second session is more important. So why they started? To grow more strength or to give more uh, patriotism in the minds of the people. For that, they started this international conference. So these are the factors that promoted for the growth of. So we'll uh, continue, not uh, the lesson got over here. Then we will continue with the sick, uh, next lesson in the next class. Thank you.